Welcome to Chess and Lattes, Advanced Guide to the Nimzo Indian Defense. The Nimzo is a very popular at top level defense after these four moves, Bishop B4, and in part one, we'll cover E3, which is the main line, as well as Queen C2, which is played at top level. In the second video, we'll cover other lines that black should face. So onto the first example, E3, the line uh, that we'll cover first. Very important in this video, what we will do is at the end of each critical line, we will summarize what you should remember. So for the line one, I'm gonna show you here, these are the moves we're gonna cover, and this is the type of position you should aim for black. What I recommend to play in this position is the bishop on b7. So you start with b6, you develop the bishop like that on the long diagonal. Of course, other moves are possible, but let's see. Bishop g3, bishop b7, knight f3. Now you take here, you castle, white castle. And here, very important, the key theme is you have the long diagonal here, but you play knight e4, attacking c3, but then you're gonna follow up with f5. So let's see, queen c2, attacking e4, and defending here, f5. And now, this knight over here is super annoying for white. It's protected by this bishop, and you can see you have all kinds of attack against the white king. So I really recommend that setup. 92 is the most popular move here, and obviously attacking on e4. But because the knight re is removed, knight h4 comes in. And you can see that with the queen over here and the bishop and the rook coming, you can be very fast attacking the king. So now the best move is f3. And again, we will follow. And now you take, take, and play d6. And it's very easy. You're going to want to play rook f6, rook lift over here. The knight come on d7, go to f6. You have a very strong queen on h4, the bishop, and white has the double pawns here. So even though white has a bishop pair, you're playing with all these active moves. And I really like the play uh, with black. So that's all you should know in this line. I'm gonna, because this is a very important main line, I'm gonna show you a key game played by Grandmaster Laurent. I'm gonna pause here. You don't need to remember these moves, but you can see that black is now threatening to attack the king on the king side. So obviously white is trying to get the king out of the way, but again, this is like a desperate measure and black can really activate all the pieces and create a winning attack. The queen comes in. And black resign. So this shows you the potential happening for the attack. So what should you remember for this line number one? These are the moves on the left, and this is a position. Remember bishop on b7, knight on e4 and f5, and that's a very logical way to play with black. So this was line number one. Let's go to the next chapter. In the second line, white starts with e3, then b6 with bishop b7, same idea, but now knight e2. Very simple idea. White wants to recapture like that and not with a b2 pawn. White does not want the double pawn on the c line. So here I recommend knight at e4, once again, trying to double the pawn. So queen c2 is logical. So now if you trade twice over here, white has defending a c3 square. So you play bishop b7, a3, and now you exchange. And white has obtained exactly 
uh, the goal to avoid doubling here. But black has a lot of play. Castle, b4. So it seems very simple, right? Bishop d2, maybe bishop e2, and, and castle. But here you play d6, bishop b2, and now queen f6 coming against the diagonal. Rook d1 is played, and a5. And here, once again, you have a very logical play. You're going to have the knight coming here, but then the queen can come on the queen side, and you can develop an attack. We're going to follow now the game, Moisenko with black, again, Tregubov with white, two very strong Russian Grandmaster. Let's see how the game unfolds. So very important, once again, the queen come here and attacking the king. And you have the bishop also threatening this way. So you have a very aggressive setup for black. And once again, you have this play on the f file. Maybe e5 will come in. Maybe f4. That king here is in trouble. So you can see very logical. 97, bishop b7, queen h4. These were the same moves that we saw in line 1, but here with a different setup for white. Let's continue. In line 1, we also saw that move after playing on the b7, h1 diagonal. White has done a good job to block the bishop, but the bishop comes back here ends attacking on this diagonal, and the queen here is still trying to get to the king. So bishop c8, very important to play in this line. So once again, we see an attack against the white king. This is why I recommend this setup for black. And once again, we get the rook lift, rook f6, rook h6, and black is completely winning here. And here, white resign. Obviously, uh, if you take on h1, we're going to come to g3, and this is a completely one position. So very exciting stuff. And here, these are the moves I recommend to memorize until 12 a5 on the left and you can see the position on the right you should aim for in this second line and in this last line covered in this video queen c2 is a move to cover here very important once again when you take on c3 white will recapture with the queen here i recommend to castle now a3 the main move and the queen ends up here and here I am trying to recommend lines which don't uh, require tons and tons of memorization. So a very unusual but very good move here is queen e8. The idea you're going to do d6 and e5 and the queen is very well placed over here. So typically white builds a center with f3 and now you go d5. Keep in mind that you could also play uh, d6 and on e4 play e5 but now after f3 the d5 is very strong so here white would develop that's the best move here knight bd7 and here knight h3 is very common you go back on f2 play e3 maybe long castle maybe short castle so here h6 is very important that the bishop should retreat here attacking c7 and here, c5 is the move I would go for. So why would play e3? Then you do queen e7 here, bishop develop, you take, take, and rook e8. And here you're threatening e5. So let's say if you long castle with white, trying to attack maybe with g4, g5, you play take, take, knight b6, and the bishop is under attack and then you're gonna attack first on the c file so the best move here would be castle here 
but then you go with e5 and you can see here that the knight is not well placed if you take here on e5 you're gonna recapture and you have a better position for uh, black so the key move here is queen e8 and of course if why would do knight f3 then you can simply do b3 and go back and do the standard plan uh, knight e4 followed by f5 and d6 knight d7 that's why f3 is a critical line but you go right in the center with d5 that's all you need to remember in this very important line so these are the moves that we just studied and this is uh, the position after 6 queen e8 so i recommend you just take a snapshot of that or come back to this video if you play the nimzo and um, you can really also play this position against a computer uh, go on leeches or go on chess.com and play this opening with black practice and then play in your games you can enter these moves and then play from the starting position let's say after queen e8 and see how you do i hope you enjoyed this part one of the nimzo guide i will cover in part two other lines that white could do namely a3 the same ish f3 knight f3 bishop g5 all that will be covered in the next video thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you like this content